everybody good to see you again can you can you hear me first just to make sure that everything technical is working yes you can hi shy welcome here shalom my friend hi craig hi shaka hi misha uh jimmy lauritsen flip oh <laughs> already 44 people that's much more than last time so hopefully you'll be a lot so we're not gonna start the game immediately let's leave a little time for everybody to be here first of all uh i need to apologize i'm late right <laughs> hi murphy hi justin <laughs> hi john dominguez hi marco hi fex hi hohis oh yes normal yeah, i know i know i know it's not the first time i'm late but uh this time uh, we didn't even uh, pl uh plan uh, the uh what well, started started the the timer so i'm really sorry uh, last time many of us were on the wrong channel oh really that's why you weren't there oh yes thank you fex leo is never late you're right you are early guys <laughs> uh well it's wonderful to see you i see you're already 42 so hopefully uh we'll be around 100 maybe more and of course the, then there's the replay and <laughs> leo is a wizard <laughs> uh okay uh so uh, what I want to tell you is first, uh, I would like to give you a little update before we play this um, uh, this game. Finally, chat on iPad. Oh, it works on iPad. That's good news. Uh, yes, we are all in a good place again, and we've you know I've missed you guys. Uh, we've worked so hard. I mean, it shows. You know, I look tired. We're all tired. We don't sleep much. And you know why it, it is like that? It's because we've worked nonstop since the Kickstarter's uh, finished uh, on the files, on providing and sending the files to everybody, uh, to, to the printer, right? We, we really wanted uh, to be on time, and so we've worked uh, our ass off. Sorry for uh, this <laughs> word, but it's true. It's been, it's been crazy. Uh, the amount of work was enormous, but we are very, very, very proud with the result. Uh, you will see, what do you say, are you also working on the Joan of Arc game? Well, after I'm finished with uh, Mythic Battles, which means now, like uh, this week or next week, yes, I'll be fully dedicated to Joan of Arc. And it, of course, when we had a little free time, we worked on Joan of Arc, and we can't wait to show you uh, the new game. Uh, Erwan is here. You're right, friends. Say hi, Erwan. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Salut la main d'Erwan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm still reading your your comments. Uh, so uh, if if there's something, I will uh, I will tell you. So yes, we we've been working hard, but the result is amazing. You are going to be blown away when you receive the game. Uh, we've worked. We've put so much effort in the layout. We've read everything. We've play tested all the scenarios. Uh, we've made sure uh, that it was. Uh, nice and uh, nice quality material. Uh, Typhoon looks amazing. What size will he be? Typhoon will be the biggest mini we have. Uh, even his uh, human form will be huge. I think uh, up to his wing, he's 14.8 uh, 14 centimeters. That's absolutely huge. And uh, his, the top of his head is probably around 11 centimeters, right? So that's absolutely huge. Do we've got it here? Uh, yes, we have, uh, we have the, uh, the old Typhon. You want to see it? Well, the smallest version. We, we had it, but uh, we said we want Typhon to be even bigger than all of the, the rest of the other Titans. So, and because we are live, we didn't anticipate this. We're going to show you Typhon. You requested it. Remember, it's the old version, but it's still big. And the new version, the one you'll have when you receive the game, will be bigger. Look. So, here is Typhon. 
if you want to see him next to a mini, that's that's what it, it is. Not <laughs> so. And now imagine him. Uh, I would say one centimeter bigger than this, at least, at least. Okay. Now, if you look at, if you look at the difference with, uh, with uh, Atlas, you will see that he was already a little bit bigger, or almost the same size as Atlas. We wanted him to tower Atlas. Okay, so you can imagine what the final result will be. We will make a comparative uh, yes. as soon as we are done. <laughs> à chaque fois, je prends une claque. <laughs> Everybody, people see the, the Titans. They are just amazed. So let me show him uh, a little bit before we, we go on uh, something else. OK, yes, the, the, the numbers are rising. We are now 57. So we'll wait a little bit. I'm going to finish uh, updating and giving you uh, Thank you, Jacob. Yes, I'm a very proud dad. Thank you very much. It's tough. It's also one of the other reasons why I don't sleep much. Now I have two uh, babies at home, one who's 18 months and the other who's 12 days. So, of course. <laughs> uh, you could give me later. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kenti Quintanilla. <laughs> yes. I'm, Oh, you didn't have enough money for the Rise of, of Titans expansion? Well, as I said, we hope uh, because we receive many messages every day of people who want to know uh, if they can uh, late pledge, uh, if they can get a late pledge on Mythic Battles. And unfortunately, it's no longer possible. But what we are thinking and considering is maybe uh, in future Kickstarters when the, uh, of our Kickstarters, such as Joan of Arc or Batman when Monolith does it, uh, maybe uh, during the Pledge Manager, we could offer uh, for a limited time uh, the, the Mythic Battles uh, Pantheon uh, products. We don't know yet if the KS exclusive will be there or not. It's not sh certain. I would say probably not, but at least people who want the big expansions, who want to get the game, will be able to. So it's not decided yet. It's an idea. Uh, I don't know what you think of this idea, but this would be a, a solution. And don't forget also that at the end of the year, we plan on having a, an online store with uh, the products from Mythic Games and Monolith that will be sold there. So you will find some Conan, uh, some uh, Mythic Battles, and soon, uh, well, next year, you will have uh, Joan of Arc and you will have Batman. But before that, Joan of Arc and Batman will go on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> so uh, the good news is after such hard work, we have finished uh, almost, well, it's not quite finished. There will still be, uh, you know, feedback from the factory. And so we will have to make some corrections. And so we will work uh, a few weeks uh, again, uh, not every day and not as intensely uh, as we've been doing uh, for the last uh, six months, right? But we're almost there and then we can, uh, focus on the new game, but, and that's important that you all know, we will never uh, abandon uh, Mythic Battles uh, and any of the games we publish. When we publish a game, we will be following it forever. So, for instance, uh, we are going to, to do some new video shooting at, uh, shootings at Beasts of War. Uh, we are going to shoot some new Mythic Battles video, right? So you can have some other videos till the end of the year when Mythic Battles uh, is delivered, finally. Uh, that's not the only thing we'll do at Beasts of War. Of course, we're going to shoot some videos for uh, Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. Uh, I know there's more and more excitement about this game. Uh, we are extremely 
extremely happy and surprised at uh, how people received uh, our Facebook page, right? Uh, I think we, we posted um, a picture of Lair, uh, who's the, the mountain, you know, the mountain from Game of Thrones? Well, in Joan of Arc, this is the guy. Uh, and I think we got 20,000 people who saw it. Uh, we got almost 350 likes for just this uh, image. While we are not even famous, we, we just launched, literally opened this fa Facebook page. So this is great. And uh, if you want to join us and if you want to see what we are developing, just go to Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. And if you're interested in Batman, because uh, I want to say also that for my friends from Monolith, you, you just go to the Monolith website and you will see everything regarding Batman. Um, Yes, Beasts of War uh, videos are awesome. The, the Beasts of War guys are just fabulous. We, we love them and we always, it's always so much fun to go see them. Not only because it's in Ireland and uh, Ireland is next to Game of Thrones and because we're working on Joan of Arc, uh, Game of Thrones is very close to Joan of Arc. Actually, for some people who didn't know that, uh, Martin, uh, the writer who, who wrote uh, uh, Game of Thrones, was inspired by the Hundred Years' War. Yes, so that's why there are so many similarities. Any chance of seeing Belly Ruffin today, Leo? Uh, no, we don't have it here. We don't have him here. But uh, we've received plenty of plastic miniatures and we will keep uh, updating you uh, every week, as you see. Uh, I hope you like our weekly updates. We try, uh, Jake and I have discussions uh, every time and we try to, to give you insight, to give you uh, behind the scenes uh, information uh, and to make something different every time. So uh, we, we enjoy doing it and we hope uh, that you, you like them. Who writes uh, when uh, any chance of uh, who writes when he has time? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> when he has time, absolutely. And we all miss uh, miss time at the moment. But again, this is very good news. Uh, we've seen the the whole product now, and it looks gorgeous. And it's uh, again, uh, we can't wait for you to see everything. We will display that as we uh, as we get closer to delivery. All right, uh, we are now almost 70 people, so that's cool. Um, I think it's time to start talking about uh, this scenario. Uh, what is the scenario? Well, the, guys, this is a first. Well, you know that if you read uh, the little description. Uh, for the first time, we are going to shoot. When will the June of, oh, sorry, when people ask questions, because it's live, I try to, to, to answer, answer them. When will the Joan of Arc uh, Kickstarter launch? Uh, we plan on launching it in September, October, right? So right now at this moment, although it could change and it's not official, this is our intention, September or October. So that's gonna come soon. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll communicate a lot and we'll do some a tour, some demos. Uh, we'll be at Gen Con. Well, at Gen Con, we'll also be demoing uh, Mythic Battles, right? But we'll be demoing uh, Joan of Arc. Uh, and there is a convention uh, this weekend in uh, Strasbourg. So all the French people who live in uh, in the East, please come uh, to uh, Des Bretzel et des Jeux. Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's a great great uh, convention. It's organized by uh, Philibert, uh, and more and more people are coming. It's just unbelievable, and a lot of people uh, show their prototypes and new games. So we will be there, and we will demo Mythic Battles and Joan of Arc, uh, and then uh, at the end of June. There will be Paris Eludique. Paris Eludique is a big, big, big uh, French convention taking place in Paris. And once again, we will be demoing Mythic Battles and Joan of Arc. <laughs> All right. Yes, <laughs> come to Strasbourg. And yes, I know some people will. Uh, we will see Joan of Arc at Paris Eludique. Absolutely, Ois. Uh, uh, Joan of Arc will be there. We will have some beautiful prototypes. Uh, Erwan has been working on them a lot. 
uh, and they look gorgeous, and we can't wait for you to try uh, try out the game. <laughs> you will bring some cakes. Well, thank you. <laughs> you you are all welcome to come to our booth uh, to share drinks with us because we will have a drink uh, before the end of uh, Paris Ludique, and you are all invited. Okay, uh, and. Uh, please come. We will be there. We want to talk to you. We want to answer your questions. We want you to have fun, to just spend good time, to, to play, enjoy our games. We can't wait to see you. And uh, I'm very, very happy, and I, you, you can't know how happy I am uh, to be finished with working on all those files so that we can be, again, have time for you guys. To, we can go in different conventions. We can visit you. We can uh, play with you. We can talk to you. Uh, so we... This is it. Uh, it's finished now, and now we go back to uh, what we love best, uh, which is seeing you guys and creating games. Okay. Uh, are we late on production? No, we're not late on production. We are still on schedule. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, all right. Uh, so now I'm back to the scenario. As I was telling you, it's the first time we do a full co-op scenario. Uh, filmed, right? Uh, so, let me first tell you something. This is a very short scenario, so don't worry, you're not going for a two-hour game. Uh, it's an introduction scenario. It's really for people who don't know how the game mechanics work. Uh, they can play co-op, so you can play with your children. I've played this game with my two oldest children, uh, and uh, it's very easy and, and children understand the game. So this is really a basic, uh, yes, this is, is <laughs> this is a basic uh, scenario, but very clever and uh, very interesting and very funny. Uh, what is uh, the theme? Well, we've got this big fellow. Let me show you, show this to you. It's always such a pleasure. Uh, seeing uh... so Hydra Hydra is uh, on a rim rampaging mode right and it's it's night uh, and it's it's hungry and uh, Hydra wants to uh, eat the villagers in the village and we are just little troops trying to uh, to stop him. So we are going to play co-op. Uh, Erwan and I will be uh, playing uh, the the good guys, and uh, the system will be playing the Hydra. Now, how does this work? Well, let's first tell you what the composition is. Uh, the composition is. Oh, can can you see? Or oh, maybe I can put it here. Well, we've got the Amazons. We've got the Spartans. We've got the Centaurs. We've got the Hoplites. And finally, we have the chance we have one hero with us, but not the strongest heroes. Strongest hero, sorry. We have Atalanta. She's clever, she's fast, and she'll be very useful. We need her. We, we couldn't make it without her. All right? So, we, uh, we are going to, to play together uh, these these troops, and this is all we have. Of course, when some of us die, uh, some new troops will come back, not the same one because we were dead, but some new ones. And our purpose, well, our goal is to prevent uh, Hydra from entering our village. So where is our village? Our village is, uh, well, this is the, the last... Uh, area before the entrance of the village. So the, the entrance of the village is here. Hydra is here. It will move and try to go to this village. And if it enters the village, we, we lose the game. If Hydra 
is wounded enough, that means if uh, his uh, vitality drops to three or lower, but to three, well, Hydra will think, um, uh, I'm not ready to die for a meal. So it will leave and we win. And you know what? Our villagers and our heroes like we are, we're not ready to die for a meal either. So we hope <laughs> we will not die and we will uh, prevent Hydra from, uh, from reaching our village. So it's interesting because it's uh, very weak uh, characters fighting a big monsters, a big monster, and we'll see how it wo it, it works. So, uh, how what did we do? Well, uh, is the chat? Are you still there, guys? Can you still hear me? I don't see any comments. That's it. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Sure. So you're all listening. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's still a little scary for her. She's six. Well, no, because it's a big monster, you know, it's not that, that scary. You will see. Honestly, you, you should try. Uh, I tried with my daughter and there was no problem. Okay, you, you're all listening. So, how does this work? Well, it works. It's very easy. And, of course, there are some special rules because it's co-op. So, the first thing you need to do is to prepare a deck, of an activation deck. Uh, Hydra here doesn't need activation cards. Hydra will uh, the uh, the reaction uh, the behavior of hydra will be determined by rolling a dice and reading uh, at the uh, results from this dice uh, here we've got um, uh, chloe who's with us and who will roll the die for hydra so our fate depends on what she rolls uh, chloe is here <laughs> <laughs> so yes she's the one who's going to yes she's the one who's going to decide whether uh we win or lose it will depend on high chloe <laughs> um so what do we do well we first we first uh prepare a deck just the way you would prepare normally a deck so all the activation cards for all of the troops we have here plus the art of war card for Atalanta, right? Plus three extra out of war cards because we need that. Okay. So we, we, this is our deck and everyone is going to shuffle this deck. And we have a starting hand. So we are playing together, uh, just one deck that, and we'll share. So we will just decide. Uh, okay. So now it's shuffled. So our starting hand, just like for every Mythic Battle Games, is made of this deck plus three, uh, three cards that we will, we will draw. Here it is. But before we create, uh, before we create our deck, we first need to deploy. Okay, because if we had our, our starting hand, we would know. Oh, okay, well, we are, we have this guy, so we are going to put them Before forward. Pick the starting yes, hand, yes, we must deploy. So, yes, we must deploy. So, how do we deploy? Well, you can see that there are five. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Uh, yes, we see the tokens one, two, three, four, five. Five areas, and we have five uh, units. We have to deploy in each of these areas. Uh, so Air one, you will deploy one, and I will deploy one. And uh, so, how how do we deploy, and what do we do during our turn? We'll be able to activate up to two units per turn, right? But and this is a special rule uh, because we are so uh, afraid of of uh, Hydra. Uh, we give all our strength during uh, this uh, intense uh, scene, so. We don't have to pay an out of war card to activate a second different unit. Usually when you, you, you activate just one unit, and then if you want to activate a second unit, you play an out of war card. Not here. We will be able to play a second out, uh, unit to activate a second unit without paying an out of war card. So that means everyone and I, during each of our turn, 
will be able to activate two units, okay? What is uh, Hydra going to do? Well, if Chloe rolls a zero, then Hydra will run. If it runs, it will run as fast as possible to the entrance of, uh, of the village. If it can only move one area because uh, of the enemy units, let's imagine like uh, Atalanta is here and Chloe uh, rolls a zero. Uh, well, Hydra has to stop here. So uh, uh, in, in that case, uh, the run doesn't apply and instead is the second thing. If Chloe uh, rolls one, two or three, uh, then if Hydra is at the entrance of the village, it enters the village and we lose. If it's not at the entrance of the village, uh, then uh, Hydra will move one uh, and then make an attack against uh, a random uh, defending unit at range. If there are two units, it will attack one of them at, range, uh, at, um, at random. And finally, if Chloe uh, rolls a four or a five, well, uh, Hydra is going to try and use uh, its onslaught power. You remember what onslaught power is? Onslaught power is uh, you attack every unit uh, that are uh, at range. At range. Okay. Uh, so, and Hydra doesn't need to pay uh, any out of war card to do that. So it will try to attack as many units as possible. Uh, and of course, if uh, Hydra makes a projection, uh, a throw, ro rolls a zero and can throw, it will throw the unit as far from the entrance of the village as possible. Okay, I think you, you, we, you, you got it all. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very simple, but it's all in how you deploy and how you best use your hand, because it's going to be very tight. Okay, guys, did you understand everything? Yes, okay, Shai. Yes, thank you, Ryan. Okay, Steve, excellent. Okay, well, we're gonna get it, it started. So, uh, Erwan, you pick one unit and you deploy it. So, um, how can we make it? Uh, I think one thing uh, that can be interesting is to put Spartans uh, ready to be uh, able to push back the Hydra. Sure. And the Hydra will for sure uh, go through this zone during yes. the, the game. Well, there's a. Uh, oh, yes. Well, if we put Spartans here, they won't be able to attack at first. No, no. Uh, so so if you want to put the Spartans, uh, you want them to be able to stop. Also, you want to put them here? Here can be a good solution. So he wants to put the Spartans here because they can move one and then they will be in the way of Hydra. And Spartan are pretty resistant and strong and they have the ability to throw. So Air One wants to put uh, the Spartans here. And I think it's a good idea. So uh, what I would like to do now, I'm going to deploy, I would like uh, to be able to immediately inflict a damage on uh, Hydra. Uh, so I want to be closer. And who could inflict uh, damage easily? Well, you need range. So uh, all of the remaining units, if I put them uh, in this area, they will be able to immediately inflict damage. Uh, I will put uh, the hoplites here because they can only move one and they still can attack at distance. Uh, I could also put uh, the centaurs, but the centaurs can move two and then they have a range attack. So I think they can be placed further. So I will deploy uh, the hoplites here. Oh, yes, in this scenario, I forgot to, to mention, uh, you need to put all of the uh, forest, so that means when we are in the forest, 
uh, if Hydra attacks from a distance, will have plus one defense. And all of the ruins, so if Hydra is in our area and attacks us, will have a plus one defense. But no rocks, unfortunately. So that means this area is not a rock area, it's a normal area. Oh, very good question, Ryan. Uh, yes, Hydra will regain health every time it activates, except if it runs. As you all know, running is a, a, a complex or special action. And when you do that, you do not use your powers nor your talents. So if Hydra runs, then it will not regenerate. In any other case, it will regenerate. So it's, it makes it even harder for us because we need to put it back to three uh, at the end of our turn. All right. And before uh, Hydra reaches uh, the entrance of the village. So now I've deployed uh, the hoplites. It's uh, Air One's turn to deploy someone. Uh... I think a uh, good thing to do is to uh, protect a bit Atalanta because if she dies, she did not reappear, if I will understand. Yes, she will. She, she will. will. She okay. will. Any, oh, yes. I forgot. That's good. I forgot to mention also one uh, big thing. Uh, well, I did tell you that the units, uh, maybe you, th you understood the troops, would come back if they're killed. It's not the same. It's uh, a reinforcement coming. And they will come from our deployment areas. But that even includes our hero. A new hero will come and replace uh, uh, Atalanta if she dies. But we come so far away from uh, Hydra that uh, if we die, it's not very, it's not certain that we'll have the opportunity to attack again. So now back to you, Elwa. Uh, what if we put Atalanta here to go in the forest after? And shoot. And shoot to be uh, yes in security yes yeah. Atalanta is a key character here she's the strongest of all and don't forget we have art of war cards and we are going to be able to use uh, these art of war cards to go choose the one card we want if we don't have it or to use Atalanta's uh, powers Atalanta has two power one power is dodge. Uh, I'm not sure it's, I think, yes, it's dodge. It allows her with one auto war card to increase her defense by two. And her second uh, power, which costs one of a war card two, is called Huntress. And Huntress allows Atalanta to shoot, then move, then attack uh, close combat. Close combat which means attack twice, and this is very important. Nice tactics, Air One, uh, said uh, Mike. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Air One, so now it's my turn. Uh, the only two units left are the Amazons and the Centaurs. Hmm. I think, uh, oh. Centaurs are the more the fastest. The faster, so they can be. Yes, but they only have a range of one. If I put the centaurs here, they will be able to, uh, for sure, to move and, and attack. Yeah. And if we put the Amazons here after, we can make a run and then have a good point of sight. Yes, yes, everything. okay. Okay, let's put the Santos here, make sure we can we can use uh, their speed. And now, uh, Air One, you deploy uh, the Amazons, the last, ones. the last ones. Okay. Okay, guys, of course, we can see your comments, so if you have questions, uh, you can always ask. You're right, deploy is done. Deployment is done. Now, the next step is we are going to draw three cards, but you can see them this time. We've got one auto war card. We've got the Spartans, uh, they are far. And we've got the Hoplites. All right, 
So, uh, heroes start. So we're going to start. Uh, everyone just draw a card. Another auto war card. So we've got lots of auto war card. Uh, Elwan, you want to start or you want me to start? We we want to, uh, we, we play uh, together. Together, right? but I will uh, activate one and you yeah. will activate okay. one and we can talk about uh, the tactics. So uh, I'll start and uh, the first one I'll activate, I think, is hoplites. Okay, what well, uh, activates the hoplites? So we will discard, discard the hoplites and now we can activate them. I'll make them move in the rooms. Just build them and then attack Hydra. So, uh, if, as you know, if hoplites are, uh, is it four or more? Something like that? Yep. Yes. If okay. there's four hop hoplites or more, and they are five, so no problem, then they've got uh, plus one range, plus one attack. So I need four dice. Four dice. All right. So, Hydra's defense is seven. We want to make as many as possible. Oh. Okay, it's a five. Let's. And they don't have. Uh, they don't have. Uh, throw no, mighty throw. No, no, just no. Two or plus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's good. A nine. That's a nine. So. One life point. Yes. Now uh, Hydra is back to nine life, uh, nine vitality. Okay. Now we need to think of uh, our second move. There is well, either we I play the Spartans, but the Spartans will only be able to move, and they won't be able to attack. And I believe it's very important that we do some attack every turn. So I'm tempted to go uh, search for or draw two cards. Hmm? So either to draw two cards or to go look for maybe the centaurs. Uh, the centaurs could come here just to stop uh, Hydra to prevent uh, him from running. You yeah. see, and attacking and attack them. Right. That's a good idea. Let's search for them. So either we want to, because if we drew Atalanta, you, you say to them that we are allowed to play another unit for... Yes, I told them. I told okay. them. Uh, so, thanks. So, no additional attack? Oh, yeah. Um, Erwan, should we pick Hoplite or should we... Uh, the Centaurs, or should we try and see what we get? And then if we don't, we just use another war card to choose it. Yes. Because if we draw either Atalanta or the Centaurs, we can attack. Uh, we can attack uh, no. Hydra. Uh, with Atalanta, we can't. Why not? Because the only forest zone she can enter in. There is a oh, an error. Yeah, sure. There is a line here, so she can't enter here directly. Yes, she moves two. Atalanta has a move of two. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's. Let's do it. Okay, just we want to try, because if we draw two cards and we've got the good one, well, it's better than just using another war card to get one card. So we're going to try. Let's hope. Amazons, that's not good. Hoplites, that's not good. Okay, well, we hope that we, this will not be a mistake we'll pay in the end. Let's use one other war card to go and pick for the Santos, were they here? No, but Atalanta <laughs> was here. All right, so I will use an auto war card to search, to go search for centaur. the Centaur. Leo, in case a hero dies, is there an order of, in, of which hero comes forth? I don't understand the question. Is there a cue? Is there a queue of uh, reappear? I think it's the question. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we can choose uh, if a hero dies, we can choose which one comes uh, at, at where. But usually, as soon as he dies, he immediately comes back in an area. 
So there will not be any problems. Okay. So, so I'm going to play the centaurs and just hope, uh, and I will, you know, they are going to be very brave. Uh, the, the centaurs will move too and just stand in front of Hydra. <laughs> it's very, very brave or silly, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, uh, they are going to attack, of course. Uh, so they have three and plus yeah, one if three. the troop is complete. So, so they've four. got four dice also. Let's see. Now it's back to nine. Well, it's still a seven. Yes, Sofiane, it started, but it's just the beginning. Okay, let's hope. I need to roll seven. Oh, that's a very good one. Well, uh, they don't have the roll, uh, the mighty throw ability, so it's lost. And then I have three fives. So possibly, technically, I could inflict three wounds. So either I choose to take this out and make one for sure or i re-roll the three i will try and re-roll the three fives and hope i'm not going to do three uh blanks oh, oh, oh. oh that's very good well just two we've got five plus three is uh two uh, is eight five plus two is seven and five plus one unfortunately is uh six and it's not enough so but that's a very good first yeah. turn. Uh, Hydra is has lost two wounds. Three, three wounds. Three, three wounds, wounds. Uh, altogether. You see. All right. Uh, and now, <laughs> all good things must come to an end. It's Hydra's turn, and the dreadful Chloe is going to roll a dice and decide of our fate. Come on, Chloe, roll uh, a zero if possible. Oh, it's a one. Okay, could have been worse because she's not, uh, Hydra is not going to use uh, Onslaught. So when you roll a one, if Hydra is at the entrance of the village, it's not. Uh, if otherwise Hydra, Hydra moves one area closer to the village entrance and they then makes an attack uh, against a random defending unit in range. So. Uh, what is the closest way? I think it's just here yep, to the entrance. So Hydra moves where the Santos are. Okay. And now it's going to attack and uh, Hydra has two units at range. One in their area, which is the Santos. And because Hydra has a uh, torment, the Santos will have minus one defense Three. or ranged attack. Uh, Hydra could attack the hoplites, uh, but the torment would not work. We don't know uh, who Hydra is going to attack, so we are going to roll uh, one die. Zero, one, two, it'll be the centaurs. Uh, three, four, five, it'll be the hoplites. Please, Chloe, roll the dice. One. one. So centaurs. it's going to attack the centaurs. All right, well... Uh, Chloe is going to roll the dice for the Hydra. Seven. Hydra has seven dice, so we've got four here, plus three. So Chloe, you're going to... And uh, you need to roll, uh, normally it would be six, but you need to roll five because the centaurs are in Hydra's area, so Hydra has uh, the torment ability, so you need fives. Come on, roll the dice. Oops. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, it's it's just crazy. Uh, already five, uh, three fives, so the centaurs are <laughs> obliterated. Dice win, yes. Uh, forget to re regenerate. No, no, no. Uh, Hydra will regenerate at the end of of his turn, right? And Hydra has just uh, has just worked. So the the centaurs are killed. And they can come back in any of the areas. Uh, I think we are going to put them back here. Uh, okay. Okay, Awan. Let's put them back here. I'm okay. I'm okay. You okay with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. I was just taking that to avoid. 
Oh, yes, yes. Well, as you've noticed, uh, Chloe is like Hydra. It's very brutal. Okay? <laughs> so when, when she rolls the dice, uh, they are all over the place. So we, we're just going to help her. And uh, it's going to come in here. <laughs> so is it random even if he has an advantage on a specific unit? Yes, it's still random, even if it has an, an advantage. OK. All right. Uh, it's the end of Hydra's turn. So what happens? Hydra didn't run. So Hydra will regenerate. And Hydra, who was seven hit points, now is back to eight. Yeah. And it's our turn, guys. So let's, let's you, let us show you the card we have. And now Erwan is going to draw one card. Oh, another hoplite. Uh, oh, well, that's not, fine. That's, not fine. Fine. that's fine. fine. That's fine. Um, so you, 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 you start, yes. Oh, I think you're going to play the hoplites. Let's hot go for hoplites, yep. Yeah. I'll move them here to be ready to, to attack her. If it moves, one more. And go for classic attack. So four dice. No, yes, that's a good question. No need to discard a card to bring back uh, units. No. It's automatic. It's automatic. Yeah. Yes, this is. Uh, uh, it's called, well, it's one of the special rules for this scenario. One special rule is desperation. Uh, the Hydra is upon us. Now is the time for action. So what is this rule? Second activation maneuvers cost the defenders zero auto war cards. And then reinforcements, special rule. When a defending unit is destroyed, place it in an empty area with, within either deployment zone. These are reinforcements hurrying to the sound of battle. So we put uh, the, uh, the centaurs in an empty uh, area, which was this one. Okay, so you need to roll a seven. Oh, so there's a four, four and plus one, a five. I can't make another five, so... You will buy it. Let's make a seven directly. So he bought an automatic seven, so he inflicted one wood. So far, they have been brave, right? The, uh, the hoplites, they inflicted another wound. And now it's my turn and I uh, have a problem because uh, I don't think I can do with what I have here. I can inflict, uh, I can inflict a wound uh, and I don't want to move and not uh, attack uh, the Hydra. Uh, special rules for each co-op scenario, no generic rules for co-op, no. Special rules for each of them. And more than that, we have a campaign. Uh, I think it's six scenario or yeah, yeah. six or seven or eight. Yeah, around six. And, uh, and then you have rules uh, for this whole campaign. And it's, uh, it's different from this. You know, it's, it's a more uh, sophisticated scenario. This one, as I said, is... Uh, is really an introduction scenario, co-op scenario. Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Would the AI play the same? No, no, it same doesn't play the same. It's very different. Okay, um, now uh, I think I'm going to try, uh, and this time I'm not going to uh, to risk another war, auto war card. I'm going to search for a centaur. To search for a centaur or we could we could do can atalanta uh, attack Let's no just no. compare uh, the attacks if we pick atalanta it's a five dice attack if we pick centaurs it's a four dice attack it's not going to be to make a big difference what would be a big difference is is if atalanta can attack twice yeah but if we get her close then she will be able to. Then she will okay. Be able. So I think the, the the best move here is to go look for the centaurs again. We've played them once, uh, or we could move our distance. Uh, but I'd like to to give 
give a chance to to make an attack uh, and inflict wounds every turn if possible. So it's it's risky because uh, we don't have much uh, out of war cards. If left. we don't put uh, something here to block her, yes, there will be centaurs. But yes, I want to. I plan on putting the centaurs yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, I understand it. You see, let's let's go for it. Okay. I play a card and I will look for the centaurs. Okay, here they are. You can shuffle this yeah. again. And I'm going to play the centaurs. Well, the reinforcement centaurs, the first one were just uh, killed and probably eaten. One, two. These are as brave or as foolish as the first ones. Uh, they are going in front of Hydra. They are going to try and they are going to attack them from a distance because they have a range of one. Uh, three plus one because uh, the troop is complete, so that's four dice. That's not much. I did a very good roll last time. Let's hope it won't be a bad, bad one this, this time. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Two fives and two plus one. Well, in that case, I'm going to buy one secure. for sure to yeah. secure. So one wound, and then I'm going to re-roll this one. Yes. Perfect. Two wounds. Perfect. And now uh, it's so now oh, it's no. back to five. Yeah. yeah. Hydra is back to five. If we inflict two more, we win. But hmm, could be difficult. And it will regenerate. It will regenerate, absolutely. Okay, so now it's uh, Hydra's turn, and the dreadful Chloe is going to roll a dice, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so three. Okay, same thing. Move one. It will move one again here, and then attack. Uh, let's say zero, one, two. It's going to be the centaurs. Four, uh, three, four, five. It's going to be the uh, hoplites. Uh, five, four, uh, four, five, six. Uh, three, four, five. Three, four, five. Yeah, yes. yeah. Zero, sorry, one. Sorry. Oh, the centaurs. centaurs again. Poor centaurs. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like uh, Hydra likes uh, horse meat. Uh, all right. Uh, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Okay. One, five is a kill. Two, three, four, five, five two, kills. two kills. Well, <laughs> Santos are dead again. <laughs> uh, where are we going to put them back? I would suggest again here. I think it's the best uh, thing to do. That's their spot. Huh? Yes, that's their spot. They, well, their respawn uh, area. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we now only have one more card for them. Right. It's not a tutorial video. Huh? You can try different techniques to yes, yes, kill yes. it. <laughs> We, uh, we haven't talked about our strat strategy. We are just uh, uh, making it now. All right. Well, now Hydra is only two, two areas from the entrance. So it's getting, it's getting uh, uh, close. Uh, Hydra has finished. Uh, so he will regenerate one point. So he's back to six uh, vitality. All right. It's our turn. Now, let's see. Unfortunately, we don't have many out of war cards left, only two left. We've used them a lot so far. And the one we could play are Hoplites and Spartans. And oh, here comes Atalanta. <sighs> That's interesting because we have a line of sight, we have range, and we can move and attack. <laughs> I think with a little bit of chance, we could win just now with Atalanta, right? Yeah. You want to you want to try that? I think Atalanta could do, or should we try first with the hoplites, or we'll do the hoplites uh, after? We, we we will be able to do the 
the two during this. Is there a bonus story? the Hydra will get if you guys use all the decks like in a skirmish game? Well, no, because usually the game won't go that far. <laughs> uh, either Hydra wins and uh, enters uh, the, the village or it's, uh, it's back to three hit points and uh, then it leaves. Uh, so you, you start first. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to play? I, I want to play Atalanta. You want to play Atalanta yeah. now? Yeah. All right. And do you want to play her Huntress ability? I think so, Will. So, okay. Two that means we'll cards. only have one auto war card yeah. left. Yeah. So yeah. this is a but risky thing, but maybe it's the turn of the after. game. Yes. We have Spartans after. We can bring uh, Hoplites there. Yes, yes. We have plenty of options. Yeah. Right. Um, so... I'll shoot it uh, from a distance. So what's uh, Atalanta has uh, five dice, two, three, four, five dice. Yeah. And Hydra's uh, is seven. So there is two fives. Three fives. Three fives nice. and a plus one. I keep it here. So I just need to uh, choose. Let's do it, huh? No, it's sad. I just inflict her two, two ones, but it's not the end. No? It's not the end, but one, two. Oh, she's back to four. <laughs> and now you move I and move. attack again. Two zones and attack well, again. How many dice did you roll? Uh, five, just five. Why do we have six here? There is a you. You put one more, but I rolled just. Five. You only rolled five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you are. Okay. Two fives again. Oh, sorry, dear, but five and another die is a six. We get it. All right. That was a close, uh, quick victory. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hydra. Yes, it's finished. Hydra is back to three hit points and uh, he leaves. Well, it was we did particularly good rolls uh, on this game, and as you say, well, as you see, we we tried to do our best. Uh, I can tell you that the game uh, I did with my children was not uh, as uh, as uh, as easy uh, an easy win. Uh, we made it to the last minute. I mean, the Hydra was at the entrance. Uh, it was going to win, and we just finished it at the last minute, okay? Uh, yes, that was fast. I told you it's an, uh, an introduction scenario. So we made it. Hydra is back. Uh, we saved the village. Uh, <laughs> yes, we did extremely good roll, uh, rolls tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we've inflicted wounds every time, and uh, uh, the statistics... Statistically, you won't do that. Usually, it's just troops. Huh? These are just troops, and uh, the hoplites did one or two wounds every time. Uh, the centaurs always uh, uh, inflicted wounds, uh, and you saw uh, the rolls for Atalanta also. So it was just perfect for us, and we were lucky that uh, Hydra didn't run, and uh, well, we we prevented uh, him from running. So we played good, but well, we know the game, and so. We, we won. Uh, people who discover this scenario at first will make some mistake and will not succeed uh, the scenario uh, immediately, okay? Uh, well, we did particularly well. I'm very proud and it was fun. Uh, it was fun because it, it's very, well, as you see, we could talk about the strategy. There were many things that we could have done. Uh, and well, we won here, but if we hadn't win, uh, Hydra was close to the village and then the, the pressure was really on us. Nice and easy. Oh, you like that, Etienne? Well, very, very happy. Uh, <laughs> yes, easy to play it like that. So you will be able, this is, well, remember this, guys. This is just one scenario among 76 scenarios, okay? Well, not 76 co-op scenarios, but... 76 scenarios so <laughs> plus uh the skirmish mode as you all know uh the the skirmish mode uh, will uh, the skirmish mode uh will uh, offer you 
uh, hours and hours of games. From 12 different games. And 12 different maps. That's With yes. at least five setups. With five setups <laughs> on each. Okay, so uh, 12... 16. Uh, 16. 60, 16, right? 16. 60, 60, 60 different setups uh, for just for the skir skirmish mo uh, modes of uh, multiplayer. So you'll have, uh, uh, yes, a very good alternative for teaching the game. That's exactly what I said. I said it was an easy introduction game, very, very simple one. But you wanted to see co-op. We will show you some other co-op uh, scenarios, uh, possibly a piece of war, but a more... Uh, technical one. You'll see that the one in the campaign, uh, the AI is very different. It, it will go uh, to reach uh, some uh, uh, targets first, and then if you, if you can't, it will go to another area. It's all very, very uh, precise, and so it's uh, always uh, stressful and intense. Yes, ensure to see the troops in action. Okay, well, let's see, guys. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I don't know uh, on the Q and A. No, no questions. Okay, good. Well, maybe maybe it's not working. I don't know. Uh, if you guys want to ask questions, now is the time. Could you post the rules for this co-op? Oh yes, uh, yes. I think we could. Yes, that's a good idea. Uh, we will uh, we will show them to you, so you can you can try uh, at home. You don't need many many. Uh, uh, it's just the core box. Eh? Just the core box. Uh, how many troops? Team. How many units? One, two, three, four, five, six units. If, if you have a core PNP, it's working. Oh, the Q and A is not working. Okay, okay. Well, um, I don't know if Nick uh, Smith is here and listening. If you are here, my friend Nick. Uh, well, uh, just uh, no. Oh, Q and A seems to be working now. Oh, finally. Yes, I got one question. One question. How much bigger is Typhon now compared to the old version? Okay, let me show you. This is the old version. Uh, imagine him with uh, one head more, right? So his head will be here and his wings will be here, okay? Okay, back to the chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about Ragnarok? Well, we haven't been able to work um, much on Ragnarok. We've had some discussions. Uh, I have a Swedish friend. I spent a weekend talking about many, many things, and we got plenty, plenty of interesting things uh, regarding uh, the Norse mythology. I really want to know as much as possible about the Norse mythology. Uh, I've read many books. Uh, he brought some new books from his country. So, and we have some drawings and we have some sculpts that I even showed him. Uh, but we were too busy working on mythic battles that so we, we haven't worked yet, but we want to do it and we will. Uh, Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know if I can come back. You need to try. Oh yes, like this maybe. Okay. Uh, will you be with Monolith at uh, Paris Eludique? No, this time uh, Monolith will have their own booth, and we will have our own booth, and we'll have on our booth on Mythic Games a booth will have uh, Joan of Arc and uh, Mythic Battles, but we'll be with Monolith at uh, Gen Con and Monolith will have Batman, and we'll have Mythic Battles with Monolith, uh, and Joan of Arc. So, yes, a big, 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 big booth in uh, Gen Con. Um, uh, you guess the scenario is only for two players? Well, actually, you could play with... Uh, even three people, well, yes, usually two players is good, uh, but you could have your whole family and explain the rules and make them roll the dice and understand the mechanics, how, you know, the role, how you read the, the, the dice, how everything works, you know? So, uh, basically, it's really an, in, an introduction scenario, and because it's... Uh, 
because it's co-op uh there is no no stress with your family so i think this is probably a very very good way to start the game uh when you receive uh, the game you will you will see that we have an uh, introduction scenario quick start rules right but uh i would say that this scenario is very good after you've played the very first uh quick start scenario you should try this uh this co-op scenario and then you i think uh you you have a, a good idea of what the game is about Oh, okay. Q&A has not been working for you for two or three live sessions. I will tell uh, the people from uh, Kickstarter about this uh, Q&A qu uh, problem because it's not the first time and it's, it's, it's a shame uh, that we can't have them. It's very, very, uh, very good usually. Very, very convenient. Um, okay, do you know that Mr. Bonner is a perfect artist for Norse. Yes, I love Paul Bonner, but now Paul Bonner is probably committed with Cool Mini or Not, as is my friend Steph Kopinski, uh, that we love so much. Hi, Steph, uh, if you're here. Uh, so we won't have Paul Bonner and we won't have uh, Steph Kopinski, but we'll have great artists. We still have lots of great artists. Well, you can see in Joan of Arc, uh, the work from Baya Wu. Baya Wu works for uh, Games Workshop, he works for Magic the Gathering, and he works for Blizzard with uh, World of Warcraft. He's a, a great artist, and he's done incredible, <coughs> incredible uh, art for um, um, from Joan of Arc. Oh, this is very... Are there more Beasts of War video that they haven't posted yet? No, they have posted all the videos that we shot, and this is why we are going back there. We are going to shoot some new uh, Mythic Battles videos, and you will see them. Uh, different scenarios all the time, uh, something new. We'll have some big surprise, uh, a naval sea with even more material, something you've never seen before. Uh, I think, oh yes, post chat, maybe if I do this. I'm trying to see that you, you well, this is why the question and answer is much more convenient than here. I I'm, I'm have to scroll up and down and to see your questions. Okay. Is there a chance, uh, ask Lunel, that the game will arrive before December? Yes, we, we will know and we will keep you up uh, posted uh, during our updates with the production. You will, you know, we've been very open. We've told you everything and we will keep on doing that, okay? Right now we are on time. So we are still telling and saying that it will be delivered in December. And we are not going to announce something and then have you disappointed. But if there is a chance that it could have arrived earlier, then uh, we will tell you. Um, kind of wish you were at UK. Oh, yes. Well, uh, Craig, <clears throat> this year we are not at UK Games Expo, but next year we will. We will attend. Uh, Leo, congrats on baby Lucy. She's a beautiful. Oh, thank you. She's, she's a doll. I'm very, very happy to have her. I'm very tired, but so happy. So, so happy. She's 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 so precious. Buzz, you say? I don't know who you're saying that. Uh, tonight uh, I have very tired eyes. <laughs> Never worked for me. Um, yes, the eyes of a tired dad. Absolutely. Guilhem, or oh, who's Guilhem? Is here? Is Guilhem here? You, you were talking about. Oh, okay. Yes, my great artist. Okay. Uh, thank you for the continual live updates, Leo and Quirkworthy. Thank you, uh, Jorge, or Jorge, or I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but uh, Jorge. 
I have a huge delay between the chat and the video. Well, that's a problem. Please win this time. Uh, ships are on the oh, ships are on the way, Leo. Well, you're spoiling. <laughs> Thank you. Well, where 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 is uh, on the way? Where was where was this written? Murphy. Thank you, Murphy. Thank you. It's going to be awesome. And I announced, I said there would be a surprise at Beast of War. And if I get them, I will play with them. Uh, will you use a Titan in one of your battle reports? I think it would be a good idea, right? You want to see Titans in actions, don't you? <laughs> uh, I really hope to see more of Guilherme's art in Joan and Ragnarok. And after, don't let him leave anywhere. Guys, Gilem is with us, and the work he's shown us and he's is just amazing. We we have many projects uh, in our mind. We we want to produce great games. We want to transport you in a great universe. We will, and Gilem is one of our major artists. And trust me, when you see his next work you're going to be absolutely blown away. Really, it's, it's just incredible. Yes, Titan in action. You've been Mike at Dad for years and years. Congratulations. Well, congratulations to you too, and thank you very much. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's really, not convenient to read uh, like I'm doing. I don't want to miss any of your Titan in action. All out Titan war. You want to see it all. Titan in action. You're in a good place, Talgar. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Franz, for telling him. You already are blown away. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. You guys are wonderful, and I want to thank you again. Uh, if you don't have, uh, uh, still waiting for the Oedipus poster option. Oh yes, yes, we, we said we would do that. Well, you know, we are going back to a normal life, guys. We're going to be able to answer you a little more, even though you've seen that uh, Jake Thornton, the voice of Olympus has always been there for you. And uh, he's doing, uh, he's just such a cool guy, such a hard worker too. And, uh, but now uh, that we are finished with, uh, producing the files, we're going to be more available uh, for all these little requests. We're still going to work. As you know, we are we are all working. Uh, we will be working on Joan of Arc. We will be we working a little bit on Ragnarok, but we will be working with Monolith on Ragnarok. Uh, and, uh, and we have some other surprises I can't uh, talk about now. One project at a time. Um, do you have both Typhon, all new mini? Just the old one, um, Telgar. I think I showed everybody, but I know it's, you never show him enough. So look at, look at Typhon. <laughs> May we see the rules as submitted to the printers? Uh, yes, you will. I mean, we've read them so many times. We've had people read. We trust them. They're great rules. We, we, we can't wait to show them to you. What will be the secret Jake project <laughs> that you'll publish? Ah, <laughs> too early to tell. But yes, uh, Jake, as you all know, is not just the voice of Olympus. He's not just uh, an incredible uh, rules writer. Uh, he's not just uh, a super guy who will give you great comments and uh, be there with you all the time. Jake is also and most uh, mostly uh, a game author. He's a, a game designer, and he's an extremely talented game designer and of course we would be foolish not to uh not to use that and not to publish one of his games so yes jake is working with us for a long time 
and uh, we want to we want to publish uh, great games, and that means we need we leave time uh, for our authors to develop uh, their games. Uh, Mythic Battles uh, was first published in I think uh, 2012, something like that. Uh, that was the first edition, and then uh, we worked almost two to three years uh, before we could deliver uh, Pantheon. So that's a lot of work, and this is why the game is so balanced and so. Uh, for Joan of Arc, Pascal Bernard, who is a very famous uh, uh, game designer too, he's been public. He's been a game designer for twenty years, easily. Uh, he's published uh, probably over. 30 or 40 games. And uh, the first game he designed was uh, was called Montjoie in French. And it's Joan of Arc uh, in English. That was his first published game. So it's always been a very, well, uh, an era that he loves. Uh, well, he has been working on Time of Legends, Joan of Arc for over two years, almost three years, right? And it's only coming now. So. This is why we want. We want. We don't create games in three months. We need two to three years before a game uh, that we want to publish will be will come to Kickstarter. And Jake has been working for some time, for already two years, I would say, almost two years, uh, a year and a half, probably, uh, almost two years, on a game. Uh, and when he's finished. Uh, it will come to Kickstarter. Thank you, France, uh, for Montjoie. Yes, it's a, it's a fabulous game. Uh, the game we will publish is, of course, different. It's uh, it's more of you know you have miniatures. Uh, it's more scenario based. It's different, but uh, the universe is close. It's not quite the same because Montjoie was fully historical. Why uh, Joan of Arc? Uh, it's not fantasy, it's uh, medieval mythology. This is what we have put in the game. So everything that the people believed in. You have to go, Mike. Thank you. Uh, yes, well, uh, Mike says thank you to me, to Erwan and to Chloe. Uh, this game looks better with every update. Well, thank You're you welcome. very much. You're <laughs> welcome. All right, guys. Well, it's true that it's getting late. It's almost 10 o'clock. Uh, so. Uh, oh, will you see? Well, if you keep asking questions, I will keep answering. Will you see some other gods in action uh, apart from, from the four from the core box? Of course. Uh, when we go to Beast of War, we are going to play with other uh, other uh, other gods. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, you will see uh, our future updates. Uh, we want to have some surprises for you. And the Titans, of course, we will play with Titans. This big fellow also. All right, guys, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock. Uh, it was a short game. I told you it would be. <clears throat> we, we did it really well. Uh, we rolled good dice. <laughs> uh, the point was to show how uh, a simple introduction co-op game could work. You've seen it. Uh, next time we show a co-op, it will be a level up, right? Uh, and uh, in the meantime, it was great to see you. Thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Lunel. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Kenty. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, yes, <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Chloe, uh, Erwan, and myself. Uh, thank you, Misha. Thank you, James. Thank you, Stephen. Good night. Uh, thank you, friends. Thank you, Etienne. Uh, you guys are wonderful. You're always there. Uh, and don't forget, well, you can watch the replay. Oh, yes, I didn't mention, but we are going to try and have the replay uh, available maybe on YouTube or on Facebook. Yeah, uh, you, you see a, a Titan hand. Uh, okay, well, bye bye, everybody. Uh, thank you, Helikin. Thank you, Mishai. Goodbye. It was a pleasure. I hope you had, uh, you had fun. And uh, we'll do some other uh, lives 
very soon. And don't forget, before that, you, you might see us on Beasts of War. Okay? Bye-bye.